this video, I make an epic Minecraft themed layered art piece, and you can too. I combined laser cutting with the best selling game of all time to make this stunning depiction of survival in the dangerous world of Minecraft. No! Yes! And this skilled hero, evading everyone out to get him, is Dream, a YouTuber and Twitch streamer who has skyrocketed to the pinnacle of storytelling in Minecraft. With over 25.4 million subscribers at the time of publishing, this piece is dedicated to him. And Dream, if you're watching, leave a comment and I'll send this work of art to you. This is Minecraft Layered Art. And if you end up liking this video, consider subscribing. It's free and you can always change your mind. Enjoy the video. Now, just like my last layered art piece, every project has to start with an idea. That one germinated with a CGP Grey video about hexagons, and this one came straight from Dream. I first discovered him on his meteoric rise on YouTube with his Manhunt series of videos, where he sets a challenge of beating Minecraft on his own before a stacked team of his friends can stop him. He cleverly and skillfully evades not only them, but also every other mob and threat the game can send his way. He doesn't always beat the tests he set for himself, but he never fails to glue your eyes to the screen waiting for what comes next. I wanted to capture this feeling of dream running just ahead of danger, keeping us all on the edge of our seats. And I don't claim to be an artist who can paint a masterpiece all on my own, and I bet you aren't either, but there are free tools at our disposal to bridge the gap for us. I'll explain it in detail later. But first we need something to work from. I searched online for inspiration in the direction that I was looking to go and found lots of potential. In particular was the way this Minecraft character was posed. His arms and legs weren't perfectly straight as they normally are in game. And I love the dimensionality of it. So I brought that into Inkscape and also brought in images of mobs from the game as well as the Minecraft logo. Remember Inkscape is a free program and it's an incredibly powerful tool for making art. I use it for every laser cutting project I do and for making the thumbnails for every video on this channel. Adobe Illustrator is another popular tool for making this kind of work, but I need more of you to hit that subscribe button down there if I'm ever going to afford it. Back to the job at hand. After some time arranging the images, I felt like I had a composition that I liked. Some of the mobs I had to mirror so that everyone was looking at and hunting during on the right. And the mobs are all slightly overlapping each other so that they appear as one powerful and coordinated team going after him. Also, if they overlap, then the final piece will be stronger. And lastly, there's an intentional negative space between the mobs and Dream, which does narrow in places, but always a gap because Dream is one step ahead of everyone at all times. The layout finished, the next step was to actually add in all the details for all the stacked layers. And this part is not easy. I'd say it's actually the most difficult part of this kind of project. Not only are there a lot of artistic decisions that have to be made, but mentally keeping track of all the layers and how they will look when stacked can be taxing. My recommendation is to take it zone by zone, adding detail in small areas for all the layers so that it's easier to keep the three dimensions of the work in your head. Trust me when I say that whatever you make digitally, it's gonna look twice as cool when the real parts are stacked together. Also, as a practical matter, keep your strokes as is for as long as possible and postpone the final conversion to a path until the very end, if you can. You will need to convert to a path for laser cutting, but the features for strokes are very helpful during the design process. After five straight days of adding details to the piece, I had the design complete. I broke out each of the layers into their respective cut files, 10 in total. All right, so I'm about to start laser cutting, and I just wanted to point out I will be using some Glowforge materials um, with the QR code, so the laser cutter will automatically recognize it and adjust the settings. But I only have some of this uh, draft board. So um, I went ahead and purchased from Craft Closet um, some of their MDF boards, uh, and I'm gonna give that a go. I've got both um, eighth inch and quarter inch thick uh, draft board from them. Uh, it looks great. Um, I'm betting it'll cut exactly the same, so I'm excited to see how that goes. The Glowforge proof grade materials are awesome. They give you confidence in your cuts and engravings, which is so nice when you're deep into a project and don't want to encounter mistakes. The QR code just automatically gets scanned and the settings and focus are set. Super easy. For the craft closet materials, I was able to use the same cutting settings and get a similar result, which was great. Cost-wise, the craft closet materials are going to come in a little cheaper, and they also don't have the tape applied over the surfaces. So pick what is important for you when buying your materials. In the case of the MDF that I'm using in this project, I did prefer the craft closet materials, mainly because of the lack of tape, actually. When removing the tape from the Glowforge MDF, it pulled up some of the wood with it and produced a rougher surface that didn't take to painting quite as well. And the craft closet MDF not having tape wasn't an issue, as I knew I was going to be painting all the surfaces, so some staining from the laser residue didn't bother me. With other materials or projects, the decision could go either way. Also, Glowforge, if you're watching, 
Do you think you could work on a more intelligent pathing algorithm for engraving? As you can see, the laser rasters over the shape, but much of the head movement is doing nothing, just going back and forth between the pieces that need a split second of lasering. I suppose I could manually create concentric rings of the shape myself, but that seems rather time consuming and probably wouldn't look great. But it would be easy enough on your end to compute a spiral path for the engraving step. That way 100% of the head movement has the laser on and you would get a much more efficient machine. This cut file took nearly two hours as is, and I bet it could be more like 20 to 30 minutes if the engraving followed the shape more intelligently. No rush but I'm sure this would significantly help out a lot of your users and be another big selling point. If there is an easy way to do this already, someone please comment down below and let me know. It took just about seven hours to cut everything and remove all the tape covering the material. Can we take a collective moment to drink and how cool this is turning out? I'll be honest, by the time I finished the design, I was worried that the result was gonna look bizarre, but once all the pieces were laid out and temporarily stacked together, I could finally see the dimension of the design really popping, and I knew it was going to come together great. The next step was to paint the layers their matching colors and achieve my desired look. The zombie, for example, really needed more paint detail in its layers to look like the zombie from Minecraft with the purple pants and the teal shirt. I did need some spray paints though, as I knew I was going to need a lot of black layers, and most importantly, the brightest green that I could find for Dream. Luckily, Michaels had this neon green that worked phenomenally. Even with all that said, I was in large part experimenting as I put colors down, going one color, one character, and one layer at a time. I found it best to use a squeeze bottle and needle tip to apply the glue in a more controlled manner. This minimizes glue squeezing out during the clamping process and becoming visible when all is done. Be sure to apply glue to all the outside edges so that nothing can peel up, but also add glue to inside features as well so nothing is rattling around or bending. This will make the entire piece much stronger and act like one solid unit. Now I wanted to make this overall piece much larger than my Glowforge's cutting area, so I purposefully designed each of these smaller sections to interlock and allow me to make something much larger than the machine's own build area. You can see these tongue and groove joints where each of the pieces touch. I just need to apply wood glue on them and push the pieces together. Once the glue dries, the piece is gonna be finished. And here we are, a completed Minecraft themed layered artwork in honor of Dream. If you look closely at any area of the piece, you're gonna find that I tried to style the textures of the creatures accordingly. Like the creeper has this organic pocketed skin and the zombie is dripping with blood. The Minecraft logo is exposing a massive cache of diamonds ready to be mined, but there are also a couple hidden gems like these George Not Found glasses that have been dropped on this grass block, presumably after Dream just walloped him, of course. It measures 500 millimeters by 425 millimeters and becomes the centerpiece of any wall it is mounted on. I am so happy how this turned out. After putting in over 100 hours into this project, the result speaks for itself. Now this piece is unique. There's only one and there only ever will be one. But that doesn't mean you can't make a piece of your own Minecraft layered art. I've made the logo portion of this design that I put together for sale on my website, which is linked down below. If you have a laser cutter and buy the designs, then you'll be able to follow the same instructions that I laid out in this video to make your own piece of layered art. Now, speaking from someone who's actively trying to and learning how to tell captivating stories for others, Dream blows me away with his content, his pacing, temperament, his skill, the list could go on forever. At the time of publishing this very video, Dream has accumulated over 2.1 billion views on YouTube. That is just phenomenal, and he's earned every single one of them. And I think you should become one of them as well. So go take a look at Dream's YouTube channel, I've linked it down below, and watch some of his content. Even if you don't like Minecraft, you'll be fascinated with what you see. Thank you Dream for the amazing content and for the inspiring storytelling that you do. And like I said at the beginning of this video, Dream, if you want to get a hold of this piece of wall art, leave a comment on the video and I'll send it to you. If you enjoyed this layered art project, then you're going to love the last one that I did. Go check it out here. And just remember, go make cool stuff.